On 5 News, death in Dubai, the British holidaymaker who died just days after arriving on holiday. 5 News has been told that Lee Brown was handcuffed, stripped and beaten by police before being left to die on his own. Sometimes we never get to the bottom of a crime because something shocking happens before the trial. Like in the case of 39-year-old British tourist Lee Bradley, who mysteriously died in custody six days after his arrest in Dubai. Brown was not a celebrity nor a public figure, plus the crime he was arrested for was nothing major so it would have been easy to ignore the whole drama. But unfortunately, how he died left his family with more questions than answers. Could Lee have died from natural causes, from suffocating in his own vomit as the police claimed? Or was he tortured by the local Dubai police until it was a little too much to bear? Join us as we examine the circumstances leading up to the arrest and death of Lee Bradley Brown. We will also seek to find out the real cause of his death only six days after he was detained. Lee Bradley Brown's untimely death shook the hearts of many who knew him and those who heard about the story. The British man who died in custody in Dubai was beaten so badly by police there he couldn't stand up. 39-year-old Lee Brown from Essex was arrested on holiday after an alleged argument with staff at his hotel. Now, a woman whose partner is being held in the same police station has told us that he saw the beatings and claims Lee was left to die alone. Born on a crisp autumn morning in East London on the 18th of June, 1971, Lee was the third of four children born to Doris and Vic Brown. He moved with his family to Devon and attended Kingstington Secondary School in Newton Abbott. Before his trip to Dubai, he resided in Ilford, Essex. Aged 39, Lee Bradley Brown traveled to Dubai for holidays in April 2011 and was staying at the landmark seven-star Burj Al Arab Hotel. Dubai was fast becoming a popular tourist attraction and every year millions of tourists like Lee made the trip to the Arab city. But unfortunately, Lee Bradley's holiday wouldn't go as planned. While at the Burj Al Arab Hotel on April 6, a Nepalese hotel housekeeper who wasn't wearing her work uniform entered Brown's room without permission or identification. Brown saw her attempting to steal from him and alerted hotel security. In her statement to the police, the maid claimed that she was in the room to clean and had no idea that he was in. She denied that she was trying to steal from him, but never explained why she was in his room without her uniform. Alongside other housekeeping staff, she accused Brown of verbally assaulting her and trying to throw her off the internal balcony. She would also go on to require minor medical attention for her injuries. Another guest who was staying at the hotel who witnessed the altercation reported that Brown shouted for staff to call the police because he caught her stealing from him. Hotel security and staff quickly intervened and called the police. Strangely enough, after the incident, only Brown was arrested by the local police and taken to Burr Dubai police station while the maid was let go. Their reason was that Brown became violently resistant and tried to jump off the balcony. Officers also said he continued to beat on the metal mesh barrier in the patrol car while he was being driven to the police station. However, the statement of the booking officer at the Burr Dubai police station described Brown as calm and in good health. He was charged with using abusive language and intimidating behavior and was immediately denied bail. Brown, however, denied the accusation, stating that he did not assault her. He only pushed her out of the hotel room because she was a thief. But for some strange reason, the police refused to look into his claims. Brown was placed in a cell with other European prisoners, which included four British men. One of the prisoners telephoned Brown's sister and informed her that Dubai police officers had assaulted Brown, throwing him against a concrete wall and causing a head fracture. On hearing the news, Brown's family contacted the British embassy in Dubai with concerns about his safety, but the Dubai police denied assaulting and torturing Brown. However, after returning from the prosecutor's office, Brown had severe injuries. An ambulance was called and he was moved to solitary confinement. Lieutenant General Taman initially alleged that Brown's injuries were the result of an altercation with other inmates and said in a statement to the press that he would make CCTV tapes of the incident available as proof that Brown's behavior warranted such action. This footage was requested on numerous occasions by both the UK Foreign Office and by the UK coroner, but it has never been released. In a later statement, Tamim retracted what he had previously stated and reported that Brown had caused all the injuries to himself by throwing himself to the ground. A European prisoner who shared the cell with Brown described Brown's condition as terrible, but clarified he did not see him being beaten. 
The prisoner explained how he saw him bleeding. He had bruises on his face, shoulder, and arms when he asked me for help. No one bothered to help. He kept saying, please help me, please help me. The European prisoner noted that Brown was half naked with both his hands and legs in cuffs. He wore nothing on top and no shoes. His pants were hanging well below the waist. The prisoner noted that Brown was not eating and asked the police to help him. Dubai police noted that Brown had been vomiting the day before his death, but added that Brown neither complained about nor sought medical help. The UK Foreign Office confirmed Brown died in custody six days after his arrest, on the 12th of April 2011. After his death, allegations that he was beaten in custody spread the net, but it was yet to be confirmed. Dubai police fiercely denied the claims, describing them as a total fabrication and distortion of facts. Different stories about the cause of his death emerged. Initially, Dubai police claimed that he died of natural causes and had traces of drugs in his system, but even they found it difficult to sell that story to interested parties. Some claimed that the police denied Brown a lawyer and food and water for six days. Reports suggest that Brown, who had a pre-existing medical condition, began to show signs of distress while in custody. Despite his obvious need for medical attention, the assistance he required was not provided by authorities. After one of the most shabby investigations that could have ever been done, Dubai's public prosecutor, Assam al humaydan ruled that Mr. Brown had choked on his own vomit, adding that blood and urine tests revealed traces of hashes in the blood of the deceased. Following the tragic death of Lee Bradley Brown in 2011, his family embarked on a relentless journey for justice, engaging in various legal battles in pursuit of accountability for their son's passing. His heartbroken parents didn't just sit back and let things happen. They hired lawyers to help them navigate the legal system to find justice for their son. They also made sure that people knew what happened to Lee by speaking out in the media and raising awareness about the dangers travelers can face abroad. But they didn't stop there. They reached out to other families who had gone through similar experiences, finding strength in each other and working together to make sure no one else had to go through what they did. Details surrounding his untimely demise remain shrouded in mystery, leaving many questions unanswered. Some speculate foul play, while others attribute his death to a tragic accident or unforeseen medical complication. In Dubai, authorities there launched an investigation to understand what happened. However, details about this investigation were scarce, leaving Brown's family and the public with many unanswered questions. In the UK, where Brown was from, a coroner's inquest was held to figure out how and why he died. This inquiry aimed to uncover the reasons behind Brown's death and to shed light on any factors that might have played a role. Even though it's been over a decade, the investigation is still ongoing to date. Brown's case caught the world's attention, putting pressure on authorities in Dubai and the UK to conduct thorough investigations. This global spotlight helped to keep the case in focus and urged officials to take appropriate action. Even after the legal proceedings ended, Brown's family kept up their fight for justice. They remained vocal about their son's case, pushing for transparency, accountability, and changes to prevent similar tragedies. Despite facing challenges along the way, Brown's family remained steadfast in their determination to uncover the truth and ensure accountability for their son's death. Meanwhile, new documents obtained by the magazine The Independent cast doubt on the official account of his death. A post-mortem examination carried out in the UK, conducted by the consultant pathologist Dr. Benjamin Swift, and released to the family, was unable to ascertain a fixed cause of death. The fact that it challenges the official Dubai account lent credibility to the claims about brutality towards prisoners in the Emirate. The examination, which was carried out ahead of the British inquest into his death, found that the discovery of cannabis in his system was not relevant, adding that the drug had not caused or contributed to his death. It also contested the claim, made in the second of two post-mortem examinations in Dubai, that vomit had been found in his airways. The report concluded that the finding of cannabis could not explain the apparent finding of traces of vomit within his airways. This latter finding could be post-mortem in nature, as no description of vomit within lower airways is described in the first test that was performed. Mr. Brown's family described the post-mortem examination findings as another key piece in the jigsaw and called for all the evidence including CCTV footage from his final hours to be released. It has taken more than a decade for his family to finally succeed in proving that he died as a direct result of and under the care of Dubai authorities. Several witnesses had previously affirmed that he was brutally killed by authorities at Burr Dubai police station. 
Authorities in Dubai also promised to share the CCTV footage to prove their innocence, but this statement was later retracted and authorities refused to share the video with British officials. Lee's mother, Doris Brown, in a statement after the finding said, For the past 11 years, we have had to fight to find out how Lee died, and so I am incredibly relieved that the inquest has finally uncovered the precise circumstances in which my son lost his life. My son was a good person who loved both me and his dad very much. He died in the most awful of circumstances, being allowed to be beaten by other prisoners and, most shockingly, those who were supposed to look after him. He was not given proper food or appropriate care. I cannot imagine how awful his last moments must have been. It makes me incredibly sad and angry. I can't believe that he died at the hands of savage monsters when he had done nothing wrong. They made up lies about him and took my life too. He was my life. Brown's tragic passing prompted calls for transparency and accountability in the handling of detainees, both domestically and internationally. It also underscored the importance of diplomatic relations and cooperation between countries to ensure the protection of individuals' rights, particularly when they find themselves in unfamiliar legal territories. Lawyer and advocate Mr. Imran Khan KC said, The jury's findings paint a painful picture of Lee's final moments before he died. The fact that Lee was so badly treated and neglected was well known to his family for the past 11 years. It should never have taken this long and caused so much distress to his family to get this official recognition. Lee should never have lost his life in these awful circumstances. His death and the inquest findings have shed light on how British individuals are detained and treated in Dubai. The fact that the jury found that the lack of consular services may have contributed to Lee's death highlights that greater efforts should be made by the UK government to assist those who need it in foreign jurisdictions. It could save lives in the future. CEO of London-based organization detained in Dubai, Radha Sterling said, We are pleased to finally have a form of conclusion in the death of Lee Bradley Brown. The Dubai police stations are absolutely notorious for violence, whether it's from fellow cellmates or from the police themselves. Even today, I've received re reports and phone calls as a result of this case. But without the cooperation of the Dubai police, the findings leave many questions unanswered. The UAE authorities do not appear to have learned any lessons. There have been no consequences for the Emirates, and we continue to receive reports of abuse, violence, and torture. Lee was about two months shy of his 40th birthday in 2011, when he was found dead in a solitary confinement cell at Bird by police station by the same guards who had placed him there. He was bruised and injured and had died unnoticed shortly after being locked in the cell. No satisfactory explanation has ever been given for his cause of death. Rada Sterling has long campaigned for a full investigation into the circumstances surrounding Lee's last moments. In the year 2022, there was an official inquest into his death. She says, It was concluded that he died from a combination of injuries sustained from being beaten, from lack of food and water, and denial of access to medical care. But the inquest failed to identify who had beaten him and fell short of directly assigning conclusive guilt to anyone responsible for his death. Twelve years later, no one in Dubai has been held accountable, and the officials in Bur Dubai Station continue to refuse to cooperate with any serious investigation. Every year, Brown's birthday marks another milestone in Dubai's continuing impunity. The most that UAE authorities have been blamed for is negligence. As if death by repeated blunt force trauma is an accidental occurrence which the police should have been more vigilant in avoiding. They have refused to release any CCTV footage of Lee which might prove who actually assaulted him, though they had promised to provide this footage to the inquest. The obvious suspicion in this case, and every case of death in custody, is that the police themselves were the perpetrators, and their refusal to provide evidence only intensifies that suspicion. The alternative explanation for Brown's fatal injuries still leaves Dubai police culpable. If Lee was beaten by other inmates, the guards at Burr Dubai Station were responsible for order and the physical safety of those in detention. There have never been public reports of violent inmates being locked in solitary confinement after attacking Lee Bradley Brown. We only heard about Lee himself being thrown in an isolation cell, bruised and bloodied, deliberately denied food and water, and from having his injuries seen by a doctor. Even if for some reason we believe that the police did not commit the assault themselves, their subsequent actions constitute criminal complicity, not just negligence. 
While the inquest into his death provided some sense of closure for Lee's family and friends after they painted a painful picture of his final moments, justice has yet to be delivered in his case. The inquest gave the world some answers about Lee's death, but no one has been made to answer for his death. Without legal consequences and punishment of the guilty, and with Dubai officials allowed to remain aloof from investigation without political or economic repercussions from the UK, and with Dubai officials allowed to remain aloof from investigation without political or economic repercussions from the UK for the wrongful death of one of our citizens, the UAE has learned that our government underwrites Dubai's impunity. It is outrageous that not only has Dubai never been held accountable for Lee's death, but it continues to enjoy the privilege of being promoted as a destination for tourism and investment for the British public, despite the obvious risks this poses to UK citizens. Sterling says she still hopes for justice in Brown's case. It has not happened yet, but on the 18th of June in the coming years, we will surely commemorate Lee's birthday with the successful prosecution of those responsible for his death. In the years since 2011, cases of torture, police brutality, wrongful detention, and abuse within the UAE legal system have only increased, and Western governments including in the UK are becoming ever more ambivalent about our relationship with the Emirates. Despite Dubai's perpetual marketing campaigns, the public is increasingly aware that the UAE is a dubious ally at best, and at worst, a threat to Western interests, as well as to Westerners themselves who visit the country. Eventually, the Emirates will not be able to evade accountability, and those responsible for the death of Lee Bradley Brown must someday answer for it. Lee Bradley Brown's story serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of remaining vigilant and prepared when navigating unfamiliar legal systems and environments. It also highlights the ongoing need for concerted efforts to uphold human rights and ensure the safety and dignity of all individuals, regardless of their nationality or location. In the wake of Lee's passing, an outpouring of grief swept through the community. Friends, family, and admirers alike mourned the loss of a beloved son, brother, and artist. Tributes poured in from far and wide, commemorating his life and legacy in heartfelt gestures of remembrance. His family has tirelessly advocated for justice and greater awareness of the risks faced by travelers abroad. Their efforts have fueled ongoing discussions about the rights of tourists and responsibilities of host countries to safeguard their safety and well-being. Their determination and courage have made a difference, sparking important conversations about the rights of travelers and the need for better protection for people in vulnerable situations. In fighting for justice for Lee, his parents have become powerful voices for change. Though Lee may no longer walk among us, his spirit endures through the indelible mark he left on the world, lives on as a testament to his creativity and passion, inspiring generations to come. And though his voice may have been silenced, his message of love, empathy, and resilience continues to resonate, serving as a beacon of hope in times of darkness. In the annals of history, Lee Bradley Brown's name may fade from memory, but his impact will endure as a reminder of the power of art to transcend the boundaries of time and space. As we reflect on his life and legacy, may we strive to honor his memory by embracing our own creativity, fostering compassion, and living each day with purpose and integrity. As much as we would love to help Lee's family, there's not much we can do to assist them right now. All we can do is spread awareness and pray his family finds happiness once more. Leave Lee's parents a short message in the comments section as a way of encouraging them to move on and live their lives to the fullest, since that's probably what Lee would want for them. Thanks for sticking with us till the end. That concludes this video. See you on the next one.